Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 7, Episode 5. This has some real highlights, especially two artists in particular. So let's get started. And if you would, please consider giving me a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. Now let's look at our contestants. So let's look at our participants today. And we're back to showing them with the self-portraits they did in order to get on the program. And I think we have a really exciting program ahead of us. There's some really excellent painters and of course a great variety, which is what we want. So in order to be on the program, you have to submit a self-portrait. And thousands of people apply for this program. So it's, it's sort of amazing to even get through. Um, this one I really enjoy because of the just the idea and I think it would be really hard to paint yourself in shades of white um, This is this is all looking very very promising to me now the next person up I want to talk about for a minute. This is Chris Longridge and He's been on the program once before and he's one of my favorites and he's been passed over um, so He hasn't won the full prize, but uh, but I'm rooting for him uh, this one is a little odd to me just because of um, it looks uh, I can see a line through the middle of it in a way the composition's a little odd but that's okay um, this is unusual but we'll move on and see what the next one is oh the next one is way more academic and and I love this kind of painting but uh, the judges don't so um, so we'll see what happens again and that's a beautiful piece as well all right so we have a really good feel so our first model up is Robert Rinder, and Robert Rinder is a barrister. So usually what we have are entertainers who are exquisitely beautiful. And I'm not saying Robert Rinder is not an attractive man, but what I mean is that we get to investigate a character face a little bit more, and I think that's fun. I think the background's kind of fun too. You can really see the bone structure of his head. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get our first look at what they've done. And this looks like uh, this, this could be a good time. So, and he's gonna pick one to go home with him, which has nothing to do with the final judging. All right, the first one up was the woman whose self-portrait I wasn't crazy about because of the composition, but I think she hit it out of the ballpark today. That's a beautiful, beautiful job. I really like her color mixing here because she's got a lot of um, oranges mixed with, I have to think for a second what she's mixed that with. Let me think, orange, must be, yeah, it must be blue to tamp it down so that we have some muted colors, but, but they work really harmoniously together. She's also had some lost and found edges, which she's thought about carefully. So I, I'm very appreciative of that. I also think it has a resemblance to the sitter. So she's gonna uh, be very strong in this heat. Seeing, yeah, that's a nice job. Boy, especially in four hours. Goodness gracious, it really is amazing to me the talent that people have. And not just people that get on the program, the talent that they have, but the people who are turned away. Well, we're, okay, this one. This one I have problems with because the value of the teeth, can't. that cannot be true. You cannot have the whitest element of your painting be, even if it's a white colored, locally colored thing, it can't be brighter than anything else in the painting unless it was in direct sunlight. And this is not in direct sunlight. So this is a value problem here. It would be similar to if someone painted trees and had the shadow going in the wrong direction, you wouldn't really notice what was wrong, but you'd know something was wrong. And, and that's my only problem with this painting. It, those teeth need to be tamped down. They're just not the correct value. And they're such a big part of the painting here that, that it's hard for me to just dismiss it. So um, we'll go on to the next one. Oh, yeah, from far away. It reads a little bit better from far away, but I, I, yeah, those teeth are, are still, it's not, there's nothing wrong with the execution. It's just the value choice there. It's too light and it's too bright. It, it just could not be true. All right, here's the next one. Yeah, now this one, has a lot of blending in it. That's not my particular preference when it comes to painting, but I really appreciate it because we all know that, you know, usually when you look at a face, you, you don't see it in terms of lots of paintbrush strokes. And we really do see things more this way. Um, and this is a nice job. And again, this person is also playing with oranges and blues. 
really nice, nice color mixing there. And I think it has a resemblance to him. So we have two really, really strong candidates in this field. I don't know which one he's going to pick, but whichever one he picks, he will be happy with and, and everybody's a winner. And it'll be an honor for, for the person who's chosen as well. So let's look at which one Robert Reinder picks. All right, Robert Reinder picks this one. Yay, look how thrilled she is. Good for her. She should be thrilled. She did a great job. All right, the next one up is Katie Piper. She is an author, a model, and a presenter. So now we're kind of back to what we usually see when it comes to sort of television kind of faces. And she is wearing quite a bit of makeup. It's hard to, well, from here, it's really hard to see what her eyes are. They just look like black, black marks to me, but they're closer up, so we'll, we'll get a better idea. All right, now this is the heat that Chris Longridge is in. So they're turning their easels around, and I'm going to be rooting for him because he's, a, he's an incredibly consistent painter. If you go to his website, you'll see he does a wide variety of work, and everything he does is impeccable. So, yeah, I'm a big fan. And once again today, he showed up. He did exactly what the judges want you to do, which is create a self-portrait that has a life in it, that looks like the sitter, and that also looks consistently like your style. And I think he did. I think he was smart to pick the format as well. It's not too large. He could complete the piece. Everything here says pure professional to me. I don't know, of course, what the judges will do. Hashtag Joe was always wrong. They've passed him up before, so I don't think... I'd be surprised if, given that they've passed him up before, that they will uh, move him on. But, um, like I said, I'm wrong most of the time. I love the colors of this one. absolutely love those sort of pastel, soft, soft colors. I, I'm, uh, it's a beautiful job. It was really hard for me to tell what her face looked like. Um, I probably should have slowed the program down to have a better look. But I think that, um, I think Chris got a better likeness. But that doesn't matter. I mean, it matters to me, but doesn't seem to matter that much to the judges. But this is a beautiful painting, and sometimes it's important just to look at a painting and say, you, you know, just, is this a great painting? And you say, yes, oh, it's the woman who had the, who did the self-portrait with the milk on her face. Yeah, she's very capable. Wow, so between Chris Longridge and her, um, this could be a very interesting uh, competition, this middle part. This one, this one does not look as much like the sitter, so that's one problem. And I only say that because the, the, the uh, program is called Portrait Artist of the Year, so it has to have a likeness. It has somewhat of a likeness, but uh, it, she, the person didn't quite nail it. The colors here are not as exciting as I would like them to be, but that's a personal choice. I don't think the person is incapable of it. It's just a choice. So it's just subjectively, I'm not as excited about this one as I was about the other two. But... You know, thank goodness art is subjective and we all can have different opinions. So the next thing up is for Katie to pick one to go home with her. So which one will Katie Piper pick? Will she pick a pick of pickled pepper peppers? Well, she might. Let's see. Ah, she picks Chris Longridge. Yay, I'm glad she did. Now we'll go on to the next participant and model. Next one up is, in terms of a model, is DJ Don Letts. He is a musician, and he presents in a way that would be a little bit difficult for me because he's wearing a headpiece on his head that is um, has a certain proportion that we don't always see on somebody's head, so that's going to have to be considered here. I would find, I, I know I would struggle with that, but, but I would have to stop thinking about it and just channel uh, not think, but just channel what I see. So um, I think this is going to be this is going to be a fun grouping going on here. So first um, four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and the first one up. Whoa! Where have you been all my life? Where have you been? This is a sophisticated painter. This is a very sophisticated painter. This is somebody who uh, he's he's not fooling around. He didn't. He didn't wake up yesterday and start painting <laughs> or drawing. This is this is seasoned seasoned work, beautifully done. Spare, but everything that's there, it's necessary for it to be there. It's on a wood panel, which is unusual, but I don't have a problem with that at all. And you can see that he let a lot of the wood panel show through. So I think there's a lot of confidence going on here, and it definitely has a likeness to the sitter. 
Um, I think they're going to pick this one. I know they're going to pick. I, I just, I mean, I'm always wrong, but I think they're going to pick that one. All right, here's the next one up. This is a fine painting. No problem with it at all. Uh, it does not resemble our sitter. And the only reason I bring that up is because it is Portrait Artist of the Year. I think one of the big criteria, you know, if you're commissioning someone to do your portrait, you want it to have a likeness to you. Now, is it a great painting? It is a fantastic painting, yes. But does it resemble him? No, it doesn't. So that's a bit of a problem. Love the use of opposite colors. You know, that green against the red behind. Nice nicely done. Love the lost and found edges. There's so much that I love going on here. Now when you pull back, for some reason I don't like it quite as much when we pull back. Maybe because the shirt didn't get as resolved as I would want it to be. I'm not sure. It, it, it's almost like the painting is, is cut in two, right? You know, kind of like the, it's white below and, and red above. I'm not sure. I would have had part of the figure going off the canvas. That's just my preference. All right, here's the third one. I don't have a really a whole lot to say about this one. It's it's a fine piece. It just feels like it's not finished. Don't you feel like there's like a few more layers that need to go on there in some way? Or maybe um, some darker value shapes? Um, when I squint my eyes, yeah, there's dark shapes. Uh, I wonder if he could have done more with that hat that would have made it integrate into the face a little bit more. Yeah, I'm not sure. If this was my painting, I would walk away and know that I needed to come back and probably spend some more time on it, but I'd have to walk away and consider over time what I needed to do. Now when we pull away, yeah, it's it's weaker overall from far away than maybe the other two were. And that's that's important because the commission, the final commission prize is to do a picture that's going to appear on a national gallery and and I don't, I, this one it just feels a little bit weak to me but it has a freshness and a beauty too so well you know what do I know uh nothing I'm just an artist talking about these things all right DJ Don Letts is going to pick one to go home and I think I know which one he's going to pick uh yeah you yeah, know you can read someone's body language yeah that one yeah I thought so so we have some really exciting painters as we go into the final judging. Now the final, in the final judging, there are nine artists all together and only three will go through to the semifinals of this episode. And from the semifinals, only one will go on to be on the semifinal episode, which ends up being, I think like episode eight or, or, or nine, I can't remember. So um, it must be absolutely nerve wracking. It must be so exhausting. So now we will look at the second of our semi-finalists for the day. And I think this is a very strong piece as well. So I think we have a real horse race here between Chris Longridge and this one. Um, also because the format is different, being on that wood panel, you know, they are looking for something different. This one I spoke about earlier, I just don't think it's as strong. So I'm gonna discount that, but uh, boy, I could be way wrong as I usually am. So now we get to go to my favorite part of the program, which is when we get to see the self-portraits that the artist did in order to be on the program where they had unlimited time next to what they were able to do in four hours today. And I mean, please, I mean, look at what a great painter Chris Longridge is. Oh my gosh. I'm just, I would love to own a painting of his. I, 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 I don't care what his painting would be of. I just think he's a fantastic painter. Now this isn't the first time that I've looked at his work and also I've gone to his website. So he has the consistency and he could absolutely handle the final commission. And I think I think it would be a really su successful commission as well. So I'm not backing down. I really want him to win. Now the next one up is the one that I think they're probably gonna pick. I think they're gonna pick this one because they passed up Chris before and because uh, this is some, uh, this absolutely is, is beautiful work. Certainly has a likeness to the sitter as well as to himself. We haven't seen quite this kind of, I want to say almost monochromatic kind of work before. Um, so it stands out a little bit in terms of being different and extremely prolific. And I just think they're going to go for that. I just have a hunch. And I'm not disappointed. I just want two people to go forward instead of one. And now the last one is, oh, I didn't realize that uh, the self-portrait uh, that the woman did uh, was of the one with her children. Yeah, she had more time with the self-portrait, and so I think she got some a much better value range than she did today. But in only four hours, she did a fantastic job. 
So now we get to the absolute final judging. That is when the three people are judged against each other, but only one will go forward. And this must be, I, I would just find this incredibly painful as well as incredibly exhausting after a long day. All three of them are really, really good, don't you think? Gosh, I sure do. I want two to go forward, and so I, I'm not gonna decide. And the winner is, dun 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 dun. Well, the winner is not Chris Longridge, to my disappointment. But I'm also thrilled that this one won because I want to see more from this painter. So once again, you know, the program has its faults, but I love it anyway. And I think it's actually improving my painting watching the program. And um, I think when we're artists, that's really what we care about, right? We care about the work and the process. So remember to keep the white sheer paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.